This is going to be an enormous industry in California, and we've never seen anything like this before. To attend legislation that would allow legalized recreational marijuana use statewide remained a hot topic today. Well, legislation to advance marijuana reform at the federal level is expected soon to take a historic step This forward. new industry is expected to bring in $4 billion a year, but it also brings in a long list of new rules that you need to be aware of. Unfortunately, California is the poster child for what not to do now. While cannabis usage is now legal statewide, cultivation is still regulated at the county level. In fact, more than two-thirds of counties have banned cannabis cultivation entirely. Our research at UC Berkeley has been looking at cultivation bans, what's driving them and what the consequences are, especially for farmers on the ground. And at this point, um, the majority of residents in California live in localities that have banned growing cannabis and so they don't have a pathway to be licensed legally. Farmers in places that do not allow commercial cultivation are also struggling to enter legal markets. Getting licenses and permits is onerous and expensive, and taxes are high, which privileges big companies that can spread these costs out and makes it especially hard for small-scale farmers to become permitted. This contributes to a still robust underground cannabis market, and many have described how legalization has flooded both permitted and illicit markets and driven down prices. But it's funny that legalization is probably the thing that's squashing most the most people. Because growers take losses every day, all day long. What's the difference if you're licensed or not? There's no incentive to getting a license at all, only restrictions. Cannabis permitting promises local governments tax revenue, but developing permit programs can be really expensive, especially for low revenue rural areas. However, the enforcement of bans can also be costly, stretching thin local agencies and diverting resources from other crucial issues like the opioid epidemic. Research also shows that cultivation bans can increase social inequities. Wealthier residents can move to localities that have permitting processes and they can afford to navigate the onerous and expensive licensing processes. But poor uh, residents or people who have been minoritized or affected by the war on drugs are at a severe disadvantage. They often can't afford to move or pursue expensive licensing and may have few options except to continue operating in illicit markets. They've regulated us like criminals, not farmers. They're basically turning me into a criminal. They're turning me from a patient into a criminal. Our research found that bans can also increase fear and distrust of local government, especially when cultivators are met with punishment and not pedagogy. They don't have the opportunity to learn from their mistakes and fix the problems before getting jail time or experiencing high fines and fees. During raids, they bulldoze greenhouses, rip up plants, destroy it all. You were lucky if law enforcement didn't come because they treat you like an animal. One year when my plants were chopped, other growers gave me medicine and helped me out. The helicopters were just very intimidating. I mean, they would come down probably maybe a little bit higher than this roof and you could see the whites of these people's eyes. It was really close, you know? And so you would hear this whoop, 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 like war zone feeling and it would rise up over the hill behind us and then just stare at us and just like hover right above your home and right above your garden. That was really aggressive. In these banned counties, we have no end really, other than enforcement. There's no mechanism to do things right by the law. The only interaction I have with cannabis in this county is through enforcement. The majority of the people that came here to grow want to follow the law. They want to do the right things the right way. But in banned jurisdictions, there's no pathway for growers to grow the right way and the enforcement of cultivation bans has put local governments at risk of litigation as they come under scrutiny. Local law enforcement agencies in banned counties like Siskiyou have been sued for enforcement bias against marginalized groups. A common driver of cultivation bans is concern for environmental harm. I mean, any farming can cause environmental harm, habitat loss, pollution, groundwater depletion. 
But the big problem is that you can't regulate something that has been made illegal. You lose access to those tools of civil regulation to determine what pesticides a farmer can use or what sources of water they can access. My perspective is that the county would be much better off trying to regulate it with laws that were designed to keep an eye on it, be able to say, hey, this site is like not clean, we're going to take action. You're going to have to clean it up. There's going to be issues. I don't know. It just seems like this whole kind of it's illegal and we're going to do enforcement thing. It hasn't worked for decades and it's not working now. Just to give one example, in the spring of 2021, Representative Doug LaMalfa made headlines for helping law enforcement bulldoze cannabis grows in Siskiyou County, which had banned cultivation. And when we visited that site earlier this year, two years after it was raided, this is what it looked like. All that debris, greenhouse plastic and uh, fertilizer jugs had been just bulldozed into the ground and it's been left there with no one to clean it up. So what can be done? Research shows that cannabis cultivation bans don't achieve their stated goals. Cultivation hasn't gone away where it's banned, and you can't use tools of civil regulation to manage environmental impacts under bans. There are a lot of potential policy solutions, but it's not as easy as just lifting cultivation bans. In California, cannabis is experiencing a crisis of overproduction where there's just way too much being produced compared to how much the state uses. But there are some things the state could do uh, to reduce this issue and help farmers who are really struggling now with low prices. One would be to limit the large scale licenses that are distributed um, and require cannabis farmers to use certain practices to grow outside on a small scale, to be uh, encouraging of small scale growers, legacy producers, and people who have been harmed by the war on drugs. We can learn lessons from research to build policy that protects workers and the environment. And the good news is that policy around cannabis farming isn't yet entrenched. There's still a lot of opportunity to make farming this crop more equitable and sustainable.